Alan Griffith and I played. Oh. Now you done, Ed? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Boy, they said there'd be, what, uh, 1,100 people here tonight? So look out. It looks like there's about 11,000. My God almighty. Uh, I was born and raised in Holidaysburg, and this was my home for the first 17, 18 years of my life. I graduated from Holidaysburg in 1953. That is 59 years ago. I don't like saying that, but that was 59 years ago. What I was able to accomplish in basketball here at Holidaysburg and later at Villanova has been well documented. Tonight, I want to pay tribute to the, members, uh, to the memory of the fans who were with us 59 years ago, who then made living and playing basketball here in Holidaysburg Memorial. What happened in my senior year has never happened before, and I guarantee you it will never, ever happen again. It was absolutely incredible. We were trying to become the first team in the history of the school to go undefeated. The fans, I don't know, they started to come to practice. 59 years ago, that was unheard of, absolutely unheard of. I don't remember all the names. I can't remember all the faces, but they just kept coming. The away games, it, it's hard to describe. The way games, the, the town shut down. They literally, literally shut down so that they could follow the team bus to the game. But last night's, um, at last night's dinner, I met a friend, not a friend, I met a man who come up to me who was from Bellwood, who played at the same time that we did. And he said to me, he said, you know, when Holidaysburg played us at our home court, it was incredible and overwhelming what the fans of Holidaysburg did and represented. The important thing to remember is it wasn't just the Bellwood game. It was every single away game that we played, this happened. This, my friends, is a commitment. Our home games started at 8 o'clock. They were in their seats at 6.30. After that, anybody who was fortunate enough to come in or to get in the gymnasium were standing room only. Their reaction to every basket, every rebound, every jump ball or out of bounds was if they were playing the game. What was incredible about this particular time was that everywhere there was a banner that could be hung, there was a banner. The Altoona Mirror, it seemed like almost every other day, had an article about the team or one of its members. Every one of our games was on radio. And as we kept winning and getting closer to an undefeated season, the topic of Holdiesburg High School became paramount. It, it just, what happened to me was incredible. You could feel the warmth, the caring, and the passion they had for us. To today, I, today and then I believe what happened was a bond was formed between the team and the fans. I actually feel that we became a part of their family. And in the history of sports, there's always been the team and the fan. I think for the first time ever, we became one. We did go undefeated became the only undefeated team in the history of the school. We were also the only Class A team in the state of Pennsylvania to go undefeated 
that year. You know, the season's over. The banners are coming down. There's no more articles to the out to the mayor. There's no more broadcasting the game because there is none. But these fans, 59 years ago, they weren't quite through yet. They paid a final tribute in the last hurrah to us. They arranged for the entire basketball team to go to New York City for the extended weekend. I say to those fans, God bless them. And I have just one story I'd like to tell you. Oh, Jason, <laughs> this man said, you know, you're in trouble if you run over. But I have to tell you this story. When we were up in New York as a result of the fans sending us there, somehow the team let me wander around the city of New York. You know, of course, I was looking at the Empire State Building and almost fell over. And I heard this voice at the distance. And it says, <clears throat> I notice you're not wearing a watch. I said, well, no, sir, I don't own one. And he said, uh, are you from New York? I said, no, sir, from Holidaysburg. And he struggled with that a little bit. And he said, Holiday, I said, yes, sir, Holidaysburg. He said, you look to me like you're an all-American boy. You could be trusted. He said, I want you to hold out your hand. And he placed in the palm of my hand a watch. I said, oh, my God. And he said, I want you to pay particular attention to the 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. He said, they are real rubies. I bought the watch. <laughs> I bought it. And I would take off my jacket, roll up my sleeve, and show it to you. But it stopped running before I left New York. <laughs> now, the real problem comes coming back from New York in a bus, I had no money. I think the man asked me, he said, how much money do you have on you? And that's what I paid for the watch. <laughs> and the real problem was trying to borrow money from my teammates to get food to eat till I get back to Holidaysburg. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Holidaysburg is a fabulous, fabulous community. And I'm proud to be born and raised here, and I'd like to thank the Hall of Fame for making me a member. Thank you.